Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of Real Hope Conversations. I'm your host, Abby McFarlane, and I am so excited that you are here for this conversation with Will Graham. If you don't know Will, um, you probably have heard of his grandfather, Billy Graham. Um, Will is his grandson and is now running the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Will comes and talks to us about evangelism and revival. And those words are words that I think that for most of us maybe make us a little anxious. Maybe, if you're like me, I get a little bit fearful. And I think that's because I probably overthink it a lot of the time. But Will comes and shares from his experiences um, and how evangelism and sharing the gospel actually is not just a pulpit ministry. It actually is an everyday ministry that we as Christians are called to do. We're not called to make sure that people come to Christ, but we are called to share the gospel. And then at that point, we need to leave it to God. This is a great conversation um, where we'll really share some practical tips, but also some experiences that he's had in sharing the gospel and how he's seen that radically transform people's lives. This is a conversation that I am so excited to share with you. So let's dive deeper with Will Graham. Well, Will, thank you so much for joining us today on Real Hope Conversations. It is an absolute pleasure to have you across the screen from me, different time zones, but being able to talk about God and talk about our experiences with him and learn from one another and learn from your experiences, um, really sharing the gospel um, around the world and your family's legacy, obviously. But it'd be great if you could share a little bit about you for those people who may be familiar with you or may know of your grandfather, um, mm-hmm. but not necessarily know about you. Well, uh, my, yeah, my grandfather's uh, Dr. Billy Graham, and um, which uh, maybe some of your older listeners would would know uh, <laughs> by name. Uh, my father's Franklin Graham. Um, so, and my name's William Franklin Graham the Fourth. All right. Wow. So my dad's William Franklin Graham the third. Billy Graham is William Franklin Graham Jr. So he's a oh. junior. And a lot of people don't realize that. And my son, William Franklin Graham the fifth. Wow. And we run out of nicknames. So I call him Quinn. Quinn means five, you know, like quintuplets or something like that. Quinn. Yeah. Quinn means five. So in Latin. And so, um, and I have two daughters. Uh, they're my two oldest or my daughters and then my son Quinn is my youngest and um, so I have two girls in college right now and uh, my wife and I we celebrate I was trying to do this the other day 22 years wow no, it's, more, it's yeah 23 years somewhere around there but not, I, was, I was married in 1998 I just can't do my math <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but uh, we're, we're not quite 25 but uh, so and she and I met at college um, so we have a, a wonderful family, uh, and she's an incredible, incredible Bible teacher. Uh, she's very good at Bible studies and does a great job. I first came to Australia in 2008 yeah, and, uh, and visited around mainly in, in Queensland and New South Wales. And, um, uh, that was my first exposure. I was actually down in uh, Melbourne. That's actually where I showed up. I don't remember much of it cause I was so <laughs> jet lagged. <laughs> That's why I like to come to Australia because I sleep really well out in the country, especially uh, and in Tasmania. It looks very much like where I grow up, yeah. like where I live right now. It looks very much like Tasmania. And that's where I'm going to be later in May. I'm um, looking forward to being there, but it's nice, cooler weather. I'll be down there in your winter. I'm a winter guy. <laughs> Mount Wellington, I've been up there in the snow. All right. I love, I'm, the, I'm the snow guy. All right. Uh, like every Australia hates it, but I'm the snow guy. And so, um, uh, but it, it's very lush and green where I live. Um, I know you guys have had a lot of rain, so it's going to yeah. be real lush or along the coast there, uh, especially in Brisbane. Been praying, we've been praying for the uh, Brisbane, and um, I don't know if it's even receded, starting to recede now. But I know it's been record rains for you guys, record rains, which is hard to believe. When you say record rains, that's a big deal in Australia because you guys have had a lot of rain before. Yeah. And um, so we've been praying for you. We've been praying for the churches down there and the Christian community down there. Um, there's, I will say this, Americans, 
we're very self-centered. <laughs> we don't, we don't know half of the stuff that's going on in the world, you know, because we focus on ourselves, but, um, your news of the floods has reached the Americans and, uh, you know, they just can't believe what they're hearing out there. And unfortunately right now, and rightly so, a lot of our attention is focused on what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, the whole world is for that matter. And so, um, unfortunately a lot of the news about the floods is not reaching the Americans right now, just because of the, what's going on in Ukraine, but yeah. uh, our hearts go out for the Ukrainian people and the Russian people. You know, Absolutely. a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize a lot of Russians are being put in prison right now because they're, protests in the war and they're, they're going to prison, they're in jail. And so uh, we pray for the leaders of both countries that God will bring peace. And that's the only one that can bring peace is God. Absolutely. And so we pray for the Russians, we pray for Putin and we pray for the Ukrainians and their president. I'm not going to try to say his name because I'll butcher it because I'm a, an American and we can't say foreign names very well. So except Scott Morrison. So uh, we can get his down. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that one's easy for Americans to say. But um, but we've been praying for uh, your country and we've been praying, especially for the people of the Ukraine and Russia right now. Lot, lots going on around the world. There is lots going on around the world. And what we're talking about today is revival and evangelism. And I think that for so many Christians, they can look at the world today. They can look at the brokenness of the world and wonder what. Well, what on earth is my part to play in this world? How can I um, be a brother and sister of Christ, a child of Christ in the midst of this crisis? And what hope can I bring to floods, to the Ukraine, to wars, to famine, to disasters? What hope can I bring? And when we think of the word revival or evangelism, that actually can be a little, I don't know, everyday Christian's can, I don't know, for me, it brings the sense of fear. Oh my goodness. I have anxiety. to talk. anxiety, stress. Mm -hmm. I think I overthink it massively for you. What do those words mean for you and in your experience? Well, you know, we're as believers, we're called to be a witness and that's what we are. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's a, I'm going to give you a little secret. We as believers we're always, we are always a witness for Christ. Mm. Sometimes a good witness, sometimes a bad witness. Yeah. So we, we want to be a good witness though. But one of the things I love to do is just simply talk to people, find out where they are spiritually um, and try to prog them on spiritual questions. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes in a normal conversation, especially if I'm traveling somewhere, you don't get, you don't get to spend long conversations with people, but um, like, but here in my, where I live, uh, I had a good friend that just passed away. He was in a plane crash just recently. And, um, I had, uh, I've been talking to him about the Lord. He would ask spiritual things. And this was over a number of years and he came out of a lot of drugs and, um, he would, uh, I ended up preaching this small little community church out in the middle of nowhere. All right. I mean, it's like, you know, this is so small that mo no America or no North Carolinian where I'm from, nobody would know where that is. And I preached in this little church, one room church and, uh, with about 50 people in there. And he was one of them. He would give his life to Christ and his life started to change. And you always, always take the opportunity to be bold with people mm -hmm. and uh, not trying to be mean or rude, but just be bold. And when God lays something on your heart, do it because he's usually working in that person's heart already. They're already sensitive. They'll have things going on that we don't, we don't know what's going on. Mm. But God's already starting to work on their heart. God's already pricked their heart. And it's just almost they're looking for like someone to confirm what they're, they're struggling with in their heart. And so that they will believe in Christ. And so it's just be bold. And, and through my friend's death, um, I came up uh, where I work at the Cove in Asheville, North Carolina. It's part of the ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. It's like a retreat center. A, re a Christian retreat center. And we were having a concert. This is February 13th, the day before Thanksgiving. It was already Thanksgiving in your country at the time. <laughs> but um, since you're ahead of us, the future's always brighter over there. <laughs> and, uh, but here, but, but I was given a greeting. I was going to welcome people to the concert and then just sit down. But God laid it on my heart to tell about my friend, his life and to, you know, and how he struggled with drugs. And, but he, I'm going to see him again because he gave his life to Jesus. Mm. And he still didn't have perfect theology. He was still struggling with things, not drugs per se. He's gotten that better, but 
you know, the, what it meant to be a disciple of Christ. And he was still working on that. That's one of the things I was working with him on uh, when he passed away. And so, but I said, some of you are wasting your time mm. and uh, you need to give your life to Christ right now. And I'm going to give you that opportunity. I didn't preach. I just gave his quick testimony in about two minutes and then gave an invitation. All right. I gave an invitation and three people at a Christian concert wow. gave her life to Christ and there was no message. And what, what I say is, it was a simple message. It was the story of him and how Christ had changed his life because he believed in Jesus. Yeah. And so just be bold and use opportunities like that, that speak into people's life. And sometimes you'll see people come to know Christ. Some people, sometimes you don't, it's not our job on that part. We just gotta be faithful in, in telling people about Jesus and, and uh, being obedient to the Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. I like what you um, mentioned just there, but also in the devotionals where you talked about the fact that sometimes we make it about ourselves and we forget that God has a plan um, and we don't lean into trusting God and his plan um, and knowing that he will work through that when we are actually sharing with people about our faith in Christ. And I think that's the perfect example. You just taking the opportunity and trusting that God is going to use that story to touch somebody's life. But I do feel like sometimes we do make it about ourselves and we don't make mm-hmm. it about God. Can you unpack that a little bit more? Yeah, because we, we, we start thinking about our own fears, yeah. our insecurities, our, our inability to answer maybe those tough questions. And I try and tell people, it's always, it's okay to say no. I mean, like, I don't know. Um, and I always tell people, use your testimony. That's the one part you can't get wrong and they can't argue with. Yep. Uh, now, some of them might try to argue with you on a philosophical basis on what really happened in your life. But at the end of the day, they can't argue with it because it's mm-hmm. your story and how Christ changed your life. And they can believe it or not believe it. But usually when you do that, it's lasting, it's, it's putting an imprint in their mind. Mm-hmm. And you may not see them come to know Christ, but... Uh, two weeks later, an evangelist comes into town and starts speaking on that same subject that you spoke with. And now all of a sudden it starts to change their heart. Mm. And now God opens up their heart. And it's because you were planting the seed. You had planted a seed and it was starting to grow and they didn't know it. Yeah. And then someone else may see that person come to know Christ, but whether we plant it or water it, it's God that grows it and uh, lets it grow. And so that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And we just got to trust in the Holy Spirit and not to worry about our own deficiencies or anything like that. We'll never have all the answers in this world no. um, for every question that we're given, <laughs> but we want to be faithful in simply telling people about Jesus and make it about the power of the Holy Spirit to take over that person's life and to convict that person of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, the Bible says. And so, uh, it, listen, I get nervous too uh, when I talk to people, but because uh, I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want to fall on my face, but then I just got to just Think about Christ, and yeah. when you think of when you keep your eyes on Christ, we remember the story of the of um, Peter walking on water, mm. and this was great storm on the water, and Jesus is walking out to him, and and he calls for Peter to get out of the boat, and Peter gets out of the boat, but what happens? He starts becoming afraid. He starts to look at the waves, the things around him, and now he's focusing on his own fear, and he takes his eye off Jesus, and now he starts to sink, and that's what happens when we take our eyes off Christ, then we become fearful Mm -hmm. because we see the things going on. We start to focus on our own fear, whether it's just in our hearts, um, in our minds, we just become fearful. And, and that's when we usually fail at our evangelism is because we didn't, we didn't do it in the power of the Holy spirit. And uh, we thought about ourselves and listen, we're all guilty of it. Will Graham's guilty of it. I'm, I'm sure Billy Graham's guilty of it. Um, everybody that ever lives is going to be guilty of it. And uh, But we just keep moving forward. Yeah. With evangelism, I think that a lot of people also think that, and you mentioned this, we sometimes think that it's supposed to be from the pulpit. It's the pastor mm-hmm. or it's the evangelist. Or when we think about evangelism, we do think about your grandfather, Billy Graham, because mm-hmm. he literally spoke the gospel to generations. I know my grandmother came to Christ at a Billy Graham um, event in New Zealand. And you, know, you know what year it was? 1950s? Well, there was one in 1959. And that, that, that was a big one. That's the one that would, would forever change Australia. Yeah. And if you ever go to the Melbourne Cricket Ground, uh, see, I've been to the MCG. Yeah. And you can do a tour and... Uh, 
the largest crowd ever in the MCG was my grandfather. Even to the day, it's never wow. broken the 1959 record. And um, they don't know how many people, but it was surpassed anything that they had today. And if you, they have a tapestry with all the events on the MCG, what took place, and in the dead center of it is Billy Graham. That's uh, insane. When he preached the MCG in 1959. And it would really change, it would really change Australia. <laughs> And um, sorry, I got off on that. No, no, but. it uh, because it absolutely changed the trajectory of my family. Um, my grandmother came to Christ, then my mum came to Christ, and then because of that legacy, I grew up in a Christian home, knowing about God and knowing yeah. who He was. And it's now the next generation, my children. So it's had a legacy, a generational legacy, and I think. <laughs> That when it comes to evangelism, sometimes we think that that's, that's where evangelism lives. It lives yeah. at the pulpit and it lives with the evangelist. But it's in the everyday moments. And you mention um, that there are everyday moments and everyday opportunities in the devotions about the fact that we need to be sharing our faith every day and taking every opportunity that it is not a pulpit ministry. It's actually an everyday ministry. Yeah. Evangelism is not just for preachers. Yeah. And to be honest, a lot of preachers don't do a very good job on it. Um, you know, and that's just not their spiritual calling. It is a spiritual calling mm. uh, to be an evangelist. But we're all called to tell people about Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it may not be our spiritual gift. We may have a different spiritual gift. That's wonderful. And uh, but we're all a part of telling people about Christ. And for example, if you're as a mom or or as a dad, for that matter, and if we have children, then we should be able to tell our children about Christ. They should be our very first converts. Mm. <laughs> when you see your kids to come to know Christ, um, it's an exciting thing. It gets you excited to tell others. And then, then you can, um, but there's, you always have friends. We always have relatives that don't know Christ. Uh, co-workers that are going to work, with, uh, don't know Christ. And these are just opportunities. We don't try to ever try to jam it down their throat. Uh, we want to be meek and mild, the Bible says, but we mm -hmm. always ready to give an answer. For the hope that's within us, it says in uh, in Peter in Second Peter, and so that's what I want to do is always have that ability to preach wherever God wants me to, and it may not be preaching in the sense like behind a pulpit, mm -hmm. but it's about sharing sharing Jesus in an everyday situation um, with something that's going on, and like I said, God's working in people's lives all the time. Other Christians have been planting seeds, and maybe you get to see that you get to harvest that fruit for yeah. the first time. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. And once you get started, you get a, you get hooked on it and you want to tell more people about Christ. And so I hope that's what's going to happen to the maybe the people who are listening to us right now. Yeah. But they'll get that bug and a good bug, not the COVID <laughs> bug. But you get the bug of telling people about Jesus and getting excited about sharing their faith. And listen, there's Jesus told people about himself and they yeah. rejected. People rejected Jesus. Guess what? If they rejected Jesus. They're going to reject Will Graham. And uh, they're going to reject me telling them about Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's okay. My job is to be planting that seed. Maybe I just plant the seed. Maybe I watered it some. I don't know. One day someone's going to come, to, that person's going to come to know Christ. And, uh, and maybe one day they won't. But that's yeah. not my job. My job is to simply share. I love what you also wrote in the devotional. Like there's an urgency around this. This is not mm -hmm. something that is just uh when we don't talk about it um, as brothers and sisters in Christ as just a topic to talk about. There is an urgency to this because there are eternities. It's life and death for many people who don't know Christ. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I kind of talked about this earlier about when my friend uh, passed away on uh, February 13th. He, he was 45 years old. Wow. He was a multimillionaire. Uh, his life was all going extremely well. Um, he had found the girl of his dreams. Um, uh, she had a son. They were having a wonderful time going around the world together. Um, he, he sold carbon credits um, on the global market. And the guy, he was the guru of it. I say wow. guru, I mean, he, he really helped pin a lot of this stuff around the world. He was working with the UN and coming up with global rules regarding carbon credit sales. And so, uh, and he self-taught him this stuff. And um, he, he kind of came from money. So he dealt with large tr tracts of land already. And I say all this because the day he got in that plane, he had, he had texted me that morning and had one of the best days of his life, he said. 
and he didn't know within a few hours he'd be gone. Wow. And, uh, and his family didn't know if he was a believer or not. They didn't know that he gave his life to Christ. Cause I don't share, I don't go say, Hey, you know, did I, so-and-so came to know Christ. I don't, I'm just real quiet about that. But now that he passed away and his family didn't know, I figured I had the right to tell him, no, your brother came to know Christ. You, he, he gave his life to Christ and I'm going to see him again. And so we never know when that last moment comes. No one knew that when he got in that plane that they would never text, never talk to him again, never see him again. And um, but I know I will see him again mm -hmm. He'll be in heaven. And so it is a life in death. And it's for eternity. It's not some people say, well, if I just go to hell, I'll, I'll stay down there, pay my, you know, do my time. And then yeah. I get out. No, it's forever. It's ever. I mean, there is no think about it. That's one thing our mind cannot fathom is eternity. Yeah. Our mind can't fathom eternity. And so this is something our mind can hardly think of a billion, billion, billion years. And that was the first day. You know, it's just. It's such a life and death effect that and we don't have a second chance at it. This is mm -hmm. it. And my friend never knew that day was going to come. Now, sometimes we may grow old and we know we get cancer and it's going to be soon. We may have that time, but we don't know. That's the problem. And that's why we got to make every effort now to tell people about Jesus, because we don't know when our last breath will be on this earth. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be morbid, but I'm trying to be realistic. Yeah. We don't know. So we have to be ready to go at any moment. Yeah. And to those who are listening, are you ready to go if today was your last day? That's a really good question to ask and to think about for those listening. So, Will, let's say they have people listening and those reading the devotions have caught the bug. Mm -hmm. They want to go and they want to share um, the gospel with people around them. What would you say to them to encourage them in their in the way that they step out, in the way that they share the gospel, in the way that they prepare their hearts and their minds for stepping out and ministering to people in this way? Well, I think first and foremost, one, we need to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? Uh, we need to be spiritually right. Um, we, we shouldn't be living in sin. Mm -hmm. We confess our sin before God. You know, and listen, Will Graham's a big sinner, and I have to continually go before God on a daily, if not an hourly basis before the yep. Lord and repent of my sin. And so that's the first thing we want to do. We want to be right with God first and foremost. And, and the second thing is I would want you to do, and it kind of goes with this, is reading God's word. Mm -hmm. That's where our authority comes from. And, uh, you know, is God's word. Here, here's my Bible right here. And this is what this is what we tell people about is mm -hmm. Jesus. We don't, we don't talk about, I say, we don't talk about movies. Um, nothing wrong with movies in and out of themselves. No. I'm just saying, but that's not where our authority comes from. Mm -hmm. That's not where the hope comes from. It's not, it's not found in a movie. It's not found in a TV show. It's not found in politics. It's not found in Will Graham per se. It's found in the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to study that. And so we can share it effectively uh, with other people. And so I want to encourage people to be students of God's word um, and to be studying God's word. And you'll find a lot of great things. You'll, when you study God's word, it, it helps us as everyday believers. So it's not just trying to do something for other people. It's actually helping us at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, working with things in our own heart, things that God says, now this isn't right in your life. You need to become more like me in this area and this area and this area. And so that's one of the things that you can do. The third thing I would encourage you to do is to literally to walk by faith. Yeah. Uh, not in your own power, not in your own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit to walk by faith. Yeah. And, and it's not always easy because we want to walk by sight. We want to, yeah. we want to see it. We want to touch it. We want to feel it. We want to experience it. But the Bible says we're to follow by faith and not by sight. And so many Christians get caught up in sight. They get caught up in their own thoughts, their own desires, their own fears, instead of walking by faith. And I remember one of the toughest times of my life is when uh, God called me away from the church. I was preaching in a local church and God called me away from it, like to leave it as a job. Wow. And I didn't want to. I loved it. And I said, listen, my wife may leave me because I'm going to have to work in, in the mountains of North Carolina. My, my wife, she would she would do really great in the Northern Territory where it's uh, 30 Celsius plus every day. All right. And, um, where I live right now we get snow. So, 
<laughs> it's like the opposite of uh, the Northern Territory, all right? She likes it hot. She wants it hot. And now I'm going to live in the mountains where it snows and the average temperature in winter is zero, zero Celsius. You know, she, she hates it. And, um, you know, and I said, you know, and I'm going to make less money, <laughs> honey. Um, we're going, our housing is going to be more money and I'm going to make less money. And so I'm, I'm listing all these things, but I didn't encounter, I didn't account for God mm. and the Holy Spirit. And that, that's where I was living by sight, me personally, instead of living by faith. And so that was an important lesson that I had to learn. And uh, I want to encourage your listeners to, to walk by faith, mm. maybe not understanding everything, but you trust in God regardless, and you're going to follow God wherever he tells you to do, go wherever he tells you to do and go, and then uh, allow, allow God to use you that way. That's really the Christian life is a walking by faith. Mm. Well, you have, like for me, I know this conversation has really encouraged me in my walk. Um, and I know it will be encouraging so many people who are listening. Thank you so much for coming and joining me and joining us in this conversation yep. and sharing your wisdom and your experience, because that's what the Christian walk is all about, is about doing it together and learning from one another. We don't have to have all the answers, but we can do this journey together and encourage one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. So thank you so it, much. You mean this conversation's already over? Yeah, I know. I well, know. I thought, I thought with the exchange rate, we still had another 30 minutes or something. <laughs> the I time wish, difference. I wish. I wish. Yeah. But somebody's going to come in and cut me off in a minute. <laughs> Sorry, um, we don't want that. <laughs> it's been a joy, an absolute pleasure to chat with you. And thank you so much from your Australian brothers and sisters in Christ. We are really praying for you in May when you're down in Tasmania. We just pray that God will go before you and that um, he will open doors and he will use you boldly to pr present the gospel, proclaim the gospel to the people of Tasmania. Well, I appreciate and I really appreciate uh, Hope Radio. You guys are a wonderful blessing. And uh, thank you for all you do for the kingdom. And uh, maybe when I come by uh, Sydney, I'll come by and say hi or something like that. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys take care. God bless. Well, friends, what a privilege it was to sit down with Will Graham and to learn from him and learn from his experiences and his wisdom when it comes to revival and evangelism and sharing the gospel. What I really loved about Will is that he actually made it really practical and um, and stuff that I could actually see myself doing. Um, and it's about the everyday moments. As I'm walking through my week this week, I'm going to be thinking about those moments that maybe God provides for me to share my faith with somebody. I also love what he said about just share your story because nobody can refute it. It's your story about how God has changed your life. But I think the other thing is so often we may go into conversations sharing the gospel thinking this person needs to come to Christ today. But it's also about leaving that as a seed that is planted and understanding that God may have a different journey for them than we may think. It's not about us. It is about God working in this person's life. Friends, I hope that you've been encouraged. I hope that you've been challenged and maybe you're going to go away from this conversation asking, where are you sitting with God right now? And maybe what opportunities, how are you preparing yourself to share the gospel with those people around you? If you loved this conversation, please let us know by filling in a form via the links below in the show notes or letting us know in the comments on the show notes. But also, please feel free to share this podcast with anybody that you think may need to be encouraged in the way that they walk out their life with Christ, may need to be encouraged by taking opportunities to share the gospel in their everyday life. Um, and also, please don't forget to subscribe. We want to be able to share this story, share our wisdom and our learnings to walk together as brothers and sisters in Christ with as many people as possible. I hope that you have an amazing week this week and I am looking forward to joining you next week for the next episode of Real Hope Conversations.